Hello everybody and welcome back to Prometheus. Today, we have a new system to contend with. So I came over here next to our water borer uh, because Icarus just had a brand new update which introduced water filtration into the game. So when you have a water pump like this, the water borer or one of the normal water pumps, you're going to get uh, a different type of water than you used to. You used to only be able to get uh, dirty water from lakes and then any other type of water like from a pump would be clean water. Now there are a bunch of different types of waters. There is um, dirty water that will give you a chance for a debuff, a 15% chance uh, to get dysentery. There's also rain water which has a 5% chance of giving you dysentery normal filtered or plumbed water, which I believe that water borer would give us, which simply has no debuff chance attached to it. And then there is purified water. Uh, there are two types of purified water. The best kind comes from the electric water purifier here. So this is what we're going to grab in order to address this new system. If we put our canteen in here, we will now get a a purified type of water that gives us a 15% uh, decrease in our stamina consumption and a 15% decrease in our water consumption. So that is a very significant uh, new change, a very nice buff for everybody who's able to get those water purifiers down. So I think we'll kick today off by getting ourselves set up with that water purifier and make sure we're just constantly rocking that 15% buff whenever we can. So we're going to need two titanium plates, 10 electronics, 14 aluminum. That should be no problem. Um, speaking of electronics, you know, we have our beautiful new uh, organic residue cleanser working for us. You can see just from the trees that we chopped, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of epoxy. We are pretty much never going to run out of that uh, for as long as we need it. So we have a bunch of that in here. Uh, currently, it doesn't look like we have any electronics, so we're going to need to craft up at least 10 right now. So let's get those going. Now, as far as titanium goes, we are running a little bit low on that now. We have 15, and we need 6 of them for this. So we only have 9 titanium remaining, I believe. I don't think we have any more titanium ores. Yeah, we have plenty of aluminum, some platinum, and a ton of iron. Um, so maybe we need to consider getting ourselves a little bit more titanium going here. Um, just watching out for these animals. So let's get this brand new water filter set up and figure out a game plan from there. Alright, and just like that, we have our beautiful new electric water purifier. So we're running very low on space in here yet again, but I'm just going to squeeze it in this little corner back there. Uh, let's get that hooked up to our electricity and plumbing. Alright, so if you have your canteen in your hot bar, you can right click to empty it now. And then we'll interact with this purifier. Stick that in here. Um, we are running a little low on electricity as you can see, but thanks to the new update, we can have a, you know, 888 out of 1000 and it'll still be running for us. Let's actually see what is sucking all our power. So the residue cleaner and the water borer, of course. Um, oh wow, it's already finished. So that was extremely fast, you know, it really doesn't take much. But as you can see, we now have purified water in our canteen here. 15% minus on water consumption and stamina, so that's amazing. And then the cooling buff, I think that's the same as the normal water used to be. Uh, but with that new um, purified water buff, we are, as you can see right now, we just got it for the first time. Uh, we are now rocking this purified water buff thanks to that, so very, very happy to have that in the game now. So there also is a tier 3 item called the water purifier here, and then there's also a tier 1 uh, basic rain water purifier and a basic water purifier. So there are different ways to get the water, but the one with the 15% buff I believe can only come from the electric water purifier. And speaking of electricity, now that we have epoxy is pretty much permanently taken care of for us, I think it's time to seriously think about upgrading our electrical power here. So, I think what we're going to do is research the solar panel, 
and look into getting a few of these things crafted up. And once we do that, we are really going to be looking at some powerful, powerful um, power generators for us. It'll be... Uh, this used to be 5,000, but yes, they actually buffed this to 6,000 power per solar panel. So just a, a single one of these is already more than two of those water wheels combined. Um, I think our goal for now is maybe get two of these set up and running. And then uh, we can also start maybe thinking about working towards uh, batteries, which are also extremely expensive and require a ton of titanium. Um, but as far as the solar panel goes, the most expensive thing, of course, is the electronics and then composites. So we're going to get to work on grabbing some silica because we're going to need 60 glass per solar panel. Uh, but once we get a couple of these up, then I think uh, what we should do is look into getting batteries as well. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and research these because we're definitely going to want them. And uh, in interest of doing all of this, I also think it's about time we unlocked the electric deep mining. So once we get those solar panels up and running, we're going to be able to upgrade ourselves to electric deep mining and we are going to really be cranking out some good resources. Now I'm also going to unlock the compound bow. I think that's definitely going to be an objective for us today as well as let's get ourselves upgraded to the compound bow. That's going to make a huge upgrade to our offense as well. Good morning everybody. We took out a unfriendly visitor here and um, as I mentioned, I think our goal for right now is let's go out into the Arctic biome, mine up a ton of silica so we can get to work on getting all that glass smelted up. Um, I also think I'm going to kill this jaguar. And I grabbed the fuel cans, so we're going to go ahead and swap out all the fuel on our uh, biofuel as well. I think another jaguar is coming. Yes. And we leveled up, and there's another jaguar coming. Wow. Whew. Okay. And, <laughs> the more I think about it, you know, we unlocked all that stuff for our productivity, um, but our base defense is definitely looking a little shaky with all of these animals spawning. I'm starting to feel the need for the creature to turn more and more as we go through every day. So, we're going to just take care of all these chores right now, hop on our MOA, and then we get when we get back, let's maybe think a little bit about what we can do in terms of getting a creature deterrent as well. So, we actually have a little bit of fuel left in our cans here. That's just fine, though. Let's go ahead and swap our cans out, make sure these are up and running 100%. We'll go grab our other copper and gold as well. And of course, while we're out in the Arctic, we are going to be farming up some silica. All right, we got all of our cans replaced. Let's go ahead, farm up a little bit more silica while we're out here and head back to the base with our haul. Alright, we're going to head back, and as I'm doing all of this, mining up the sulfur, mining up this silica, I'm realizing uh, that I should be using our brand new Miasmic Pickaxe to do all of this, because that way we will be multiplying our resource gain. Uh, so I'm definitely going to go back and craft that up. The problem with the Miasmic Pickaxe uh, noxious crust that drops is that when you do a huge farming run like this, um, the contents of your inventory will be damaging you. So if you have a ton of Noxious Crust in your inventory, you're going to be taking a lot of damage over time. So it is a little bit risky. Um, that is actually when other mounts kind of come into play. So you could get something like a buffalo, put a cart on your buffalo, and then uh, store all of the Noxious Crust in the buffalo's cart. And that way you can farm up an absolute ton of it and also not take any damage. Um, but for now, I think let's just get it crafted up. Let's see how much more efficient it actually is um, if we're taking into consideration limiting our haul because of the damage we'll be taking. Just 
one quick tranquil little swim and we are back at the base with a massive load of silica. Um, I'll show you what I have here. So we have you know a ton of silica, a little bit of sulfur, all that copper, beautiful copper that we just got, some nice gold. So let's get all of this crafting up. Alright, so we're going to get our glass going here. I did have some silica that I started smelting up. Uh, so actually we have the 60 glass, that's going to be one solar panel. I believe it was, it was 60 glass per solar panel. So we're going to make another 100 here. Uh, we'll have a little bit of spare glass, but with all of that taken care of, uh, we are going to be ready uh, to start crafting those solar panels up. So we're looking at 120 glass, 60 electronics, and then uh, 36 composites, as well as 16 carbon fiber. So we have a lot of crafting to take care of before we can get these things up. But I think we might already have the resources we need. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we can make. And as I'm harvesting these plants, I also think it's probably about time we think about expanding our agriculture here. Um, I definitely want to get the component, uh, components that we need to make a few more of the tonics here. So the antibiotic tonic can be made with either honey or uh, yeast. So I think maybe we get a little bit of yeast growing, um, maybe a couple of lilies as well. That way we can start mass producing some of these tonics. So I'm just going to go ahead and craft up five more of these farm plots and get to work on setting those up. I think I'm just going to leave it out here on the ground for now. Once we seriously consider expanding this base, I'm definitely going to want to reconstruct this thing out of concrete and make it much larger. We're probably going to have to move our farm from here and then we'll make maybe a proper greenhouse for everything uh, once we get that taken care of. Uh, but that is a problem for much farther down the line. I'm going to want to get an electric drill up on a silica node. That's going to be 100% necessary for the concrete expansion. Uh, but we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's just wait for all these farm plots to craft up. And uh, looks like they're already done. Let's get these set up and get a little bit of extra farming going here. beautiful. So that's going to be our tomatoes for the moas. Uh, we have some uh, lilies, some yeast, and then some wheat. So we're going to be able to make all the potions that we want using this and also keep our moas fed. I'm going to go ahead and craft up 200 more of these organic resins in preparation for all the electronics that we're about to need. And we're also going to need that organic resin to make composite paste here. So it's a good thing we got those crafting. All right, so we have enough materials in here to make 100 um, composite paste. I think for now, let's just make uh, 50 of them. Uh, we are going to need more of these organic resins to create electronics. So I'm just going to hold on to maybe 50 of those. Uh, we have just 100 more in here. Turn all of this into epoxy. We actually don't even need uh, to turn our bones into crushed bone anymore because we have so much epoxy thanks to this machine. Um, but we're probably going to need to craft up a few more organics. That's going to mean more uh, wood, primarily. So we, are, we have a little bit of wood in here. We're going to have to gather up some more, though. Um, but for now, let's see. We have 77 of those in there. 100 in our inventory. How many of these can we make? We can make 54, and we're limited, of course, by copper wire. We do have a good chunk of copper in here. Let's just take most of that out. Uh, save a little bit of it just in case we need to make uh, nails or something in the future. We have all of this cooking up in here as well. Let's turn all of this into copper wire. We'll probably need a little bit more gold wire too pretty soon here. It's almost 500 crafts of copper wire. That's going to last us for quite some time here. Okay, and it's a good thing we saved up some of those organics because we are going to need a lot of carbon fiber too. So I'm going to go ahead and craft up uh, 32 of these for now. Let's get these composite pastes cooking up. Stick them in our electric furnace over here. Uh, I don't think we have enough electricity to power all the stuff we have going right now. So we're going to be in a brown out state. 
Um, yeah, you can see this has 12,000, or 1,200 rather, out of 1,500. Let's see actually what's going on here. Yeah, so we can see all of our um, machines are kind of operating at less than maximum efficiency, but that's that's totally fine. We'll just keep let them craft up at the speed that they can. Um, oh, it looks like our chemistry bench actually finished. But that's an interesting way to sort of keep track of, you know, how your power network is looking. Just uh, whip that out whenever you need, and uh, you'll be able to make sure if you have enough power or if you need to keep upgrading. Uh, another quick little tip, in case you didn't know, so the, the furnaces smelt things in the order that they're placed from left to right. So I just move these carbon pastes up in ahead, of, ahead of all these other ores, and that way um, our carbon fibers are going to smelt it before everything else. Alright, and with everything we have crafted up in here, we actually have enough uh, stuff to make 99 electronics right now. I don't think I'm going to craft all of those quite yet in case we need that copper wire for other stuff. But let's go ahead and just craft up uh, maybe 75 for now. 75 of these electronics. Uh, let's get those going and we're going to be ready for some solar panels. Oh, that's a bear. That's not good. Ow. Okay, that could have gone much better. We got a laceration, but it's fine. Let's go ahead and take care of this bear here. Heal our laceration really quick here. This is why you always want to keep some suture kits and bandages on yourself. You never know what's going to happen. Um, our MOA did take a little bit of damage, but he's looking alright. Let's get back to work. Alright, we got our 60 electronics in here. Now the only thing we're lacking is the composites and carbon fiber. All right, we have everything that we need for our two solar panels. So let's get these babies crafted. That is awesome. So we're looking at 12,000 more power thanks to these guys. That is really great. So for now, I think I'm gonna stick the solar panels just on the top of our roof here. I believe the sun rises in the east and sets in the west like normal, um, but you know, this giant cliff side next to us, I'm not sure if that's going to interfere with our electricity production or not, but let's just get them up on our roof. Um, stick them right here at the edge, kind of facing in this direction. Get them set up here. Very nice. They both look like they're powered up. Awesome. And let's get them hooked up to our electrical grid. Boom. And just like that... We officially have 14,000 power working for us. We have the 2,000... Oh, looks like one of our water wheels is clogged. <laughs> Good thing I checked that, so let's go take care of that. Oh my gosh, stop attacking that right now. Stop attacking that. Please stop. <laughs> let's repair that real quick here. Oh my gosh, it was half health. Um, okay, as you can see here, 50 items. The... Uh, water wheel will be completely clogged once it gets 50 in there. So I'm going to take all these spoiled plants and just toss these sponges out. The spoiled plants are useful because they can be turned into fertilizer. So it's worth hanging on to that if you have a composter. Alright, and we can see the sun coming down. So it looks like it is setting in the west, you know, slowly creeping upwards. Uh, we're going to lose our power from our solar panels once that... Uh, shadow starts hitting them. So we should be able to see uh, the power network here. Yep, there it goes. So both of the power uh, solar panels are now offline. So when it's dark out, we're not going to have access to those solar panels. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sleep and let's check how the sun rises on those as well and uh, at what time we'll be able to get those solar panels up. Good morning, everybody. I just woke up. It's the crack of dawn at 7 a.m., and you can see the sun is already high in the sky here, and our solar panels are both active. So pretty much the instant you sleep, you're going to get solar panels up and running. Um, I have them up on the roof, so if I did have them down here in the shadow of our building, they 
probably would not be active right now, so it's a good thing we stuck them on top of the building. They can get all the sun that they need, uh, and that's great to know that pretty much as soon as we wake up, if we just sleep, we'll have those solar panels up for us. And with that in mind, I definitely think we are safe to get a powered creature deterrent up and running. We uh, have been waiting for this day for a long time. Let's stop all of those cougars and jaguars and bears and wolves from spawning around our base. Let's get this up and running. Uh, but in order to do that, we're going to need some more titanium. We do not have enough to make those five plates right now. We just have uh, a measly nine in our inventory here. So, you know, that's going to be three more plates, but we're going to need more titanium. So I think we take a little trip out into the Arctic biome and check out some of the caves we haven't seen yet um, and see if we can't get ourselves a good amount of titanium from that. So I think the first thing we're actually going to do is go back over to that cave with the really deep sort of sunken pit that we spotted when we were caught out in that snowstorm last time. So I'm going to head over there and hopefully we can find some titanium down in the depths of that cavern. So I also want to get an electric deep mining drill set up. I think maybe we stick that on uh, copper and then we can move one of our biofuels over to titanium to kind of get that consistently running for us. Uh, but as you can see, the electric deep mining drill itself also takes titanium. So we're going to have to do a little bit of mining by hand and see if we can't get ourselves some titanium that way. Um, and so this is the cave that we were in previously, but it looks like it's blocked by ice. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe the update caused um, the cave walls to respawn on some of these. Maybe that means the nodes inside respawned as well. But let's go ahead and get in there and see what we're working with. Alright, we're in the cave here. It doesn't seem like uh, the nodes respawned. I do remember there being like titanium right there. Um, so it doesn't look like they respawned, unfortunately, but let's go down into that pit and see if we can't find anything awesome. Well, there was a node of titanium right here. Uh, I don't know if I... Missed this or if it respawned, but let's go ahead and grab it. Yeah, I can see that platform over there. That's the one that got stuck in the wall. Um, so this is the same cave, it just respawned the wall for some reason. The ice wall. But yeah, let's get down there and see what we're working with. Just as I was grabbing this copper node, we hit level 39. Absolutely awesome. I'm not seeing much more titanium down here, unfortunately, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go down into this deep part, grab some of these ramps back, um, and see if we can't get ourselves some titanium there. Alright, so there is at least one titanium node here. Let's grab it. And I think that's it. For this cave. Not very much down here after all, but there is a aluminum deposit. Um, that's something to keep in mind, but I'm not sure if we're going to be using that. Alright, uh, so we did find a little bit of titanium down here. 60 ores, so, you know, that's a little bit. Uh, definitely not enough. Um, I went ahead and grabbed a good amount of gold and copper, too, while we're down here. Uh, but I think I'm going to hold off on the rest of that for now, and let's head on over to another cave. Also, now that we have our um, farm expanded a little bit, I think it's time we grab some of these mushrooms. I should get some seeds here. I don't need the actual mushrooms themselves right now. I'm just going to get the seeds. I think eight is going to be enough uh, just to get us started. Uh, but yeah, with that taken care of, let's get out of here and head over to a second cave. Okay, so we do have another cave right in this little uh, crevice in the corner here. Another rock wall, so we're going to mine through this and see what we can find inside. Alright, 
had. So this cave is looking like one of those small ones. There's a little bit of titanium right there. Um, oh, and we got some exotics. Very nice. I do see our worm friends are waiting for us down at the bottom. Oop. Oh my gosh. Alright. Uh, one more worm down there, but let's build our ramp down there, grab up the titanium, maybe the platinum too. Um, and those exotics, of course. Oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. Okay. So apparently our Moa is not far enough into the cave. He's at 64%. Let's move him farther in here. Get rid of this wolf. That's not good. I don't want any of this right now. I'm just going to dump it on the ground. Okay, hopefully he's safe at this distance. Um, yeah, we needed to move him a little bit further in. Alright, thankfully we caught that before any serious damage was done. Alright, so we grabbed up all the platinum, titanium. I think we're going to leave the gold for now. Something is spotting us, or our MOA. Let's make sure that's not another wolf. Uh, what's going on over here? That is another wolf. So the wolves are able to aggro on us from outside of this cave. That's not great. Alright, let's quickly get out of here. Let's grab those exotics, take our spoils, and head on home. Alright, 25 more exotics. We have a little bit more inventory space, so I think I'm just gonna mop up some more of the like, copper, gold, maybe a little bit of iron in here too, um, and head back. There are so many animals right here. I don't know what's causing them all to spawn. There's just an animal party out here. Alright, we made it back. Let's get all this stuff smelting up. Okay, and with that run completed, we actually have uh, 104 exotics that we can deliver to the station. So I think it's high time we actually crafted the orbital relay station and the contact device just to get those down. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright, so for now we're just going to stick them Great down. Work. Oh, that now was the first have mission. Access to short range radio, you'll be able to take on simple missions. Check the board to see what's available. There's always something to do. If you want to take on more complex assignments and get more time with yours truly, you'll have to craft an infrasonic relay device. <laughs> UDA's way of keeping out fresh foot prospectors looking for an early grave. Oh, almost forgot. One last thing. Cenotai have come up with a fancy new way of shipping your exotic halls off world. They're calling it the Orbital Exchange System, OES. Yes. Abandoning all your planet side tech is a thing of the past, if you prefer. Chuck them in the pod and it drops it all off at the station. Pretty cool, huh? It's free for now, while they're still testing the pods. Who knows how much cash they'll rake in from this later. OES schematics should be available, if you want to build one. Good luck, Prospector. Try not to die. Alright. So, as he was saying, we now have access to simple missions and the operations. So, I don't know if I explained this, but, you know, my goal for this playthrough, this series, is eventually to complete all the missions make all our way make um, our progress all the way over here this is fracture manhunt the infamous final mission of Prometheus so that's definitely um, on the agenda we have a bear coming in um, so with all that titanium sm smelting up we definitely want to get ourselves a creature deterrent set up a little headshot here let's look about the shotgun oh I wasn't getting headshots there for some reason. We have another deep wound here. I'm gonna need to craft. Oop! I'm gonna need to craft up some more suture kits. But yeah, with that taken care of, let's 
go ahead, get that creature deterrent up and running. I think it's high time we did that. Um, and once we do that, maybe we test out a simple mission. I see we have another one of these collection hards here. But we did that pretty early on in the series. I think it was the second episode. Uh, but maybe we just do another quick one of those and see what we can get from simple rewards here on Prometheus. Uh, and then of course we're going to request a exotics deliver here. Let's see where this lands. Looks like it's going to be over by our water wheels over there. So let's grab up all of our exotics and ship those off to the station. Of course make sure we keep at least one of them so we can uh, keep our 10% movement speed buff. I'm just going to stick one of them back in the chest there. Let's get those shipped off. Alright, here we go. That's all of the exotics we've found so far. 104 more exotics. Alright, let's get these two other titanium plates crafted up and get ourselves a creature deterrent. Alright, we're gonna get some more organic resin crafting. We are short on oxite. There's always something that you're short on, so... I think we're gonna go out, grab some more uh, silica and oxite really quickly from the arctic biome. Um, as we wait for you know our titanium to smelt up, we're gonna get these turned into composites. We just need some more organic resin. We we'll get those turned in. We're gonna make 50 more composites. Get those in our smelter as well, um, and then go on a quick run for some silica and oxite. All right, 50 composites cooking up. Let's get moving. Alright, back in the freezing cold arctic wasteland. Let's get as much oxide and silica as we can out here. Oh, and there we go, level 40. That is awesome. So, it's been a long time since we've taken a look at our talents, so as soon as we get back from this run, let's take a look at our talents again and see what we can do. Alright, we are totally full up on our oxide and our silica. Let's head on back. Hopefully those ti titanium bars are finished smelting up and um, all those composites are finished crafting so we can get to work on getting that creature deterrent finally up and running for our base. Alright, so we're in the middle of a storm right now. The other thing I wanted to show... Oh, it literally just changed. Uh, but if you're looking at it, Okay, it changed again. So, in the middle of a storm, you can see solar panels are actually decreased in their effectiveness because the sun isn't fully out with the clouds and everything obfuscating it. Uh, and then the water wheels are actually producing an extra 800 power. So they kind of balance each other out in the middle of a storm. So, one of the things the devs kind of want players to do is diversify their um, sort of power setup. So in the middle of a storm, our solar panels are weaker, but our water wheels are actually stronger. So that's a nice new addition to the game as well. And the sun is starting to come down, which means our solar panels are going offline. So I'm going to go ahead, take a nice long sleep, and in the morning we're going to get that creature to turn up. Alright, we have all of the stuff that we need to make our powered creature deterrent. Let us craft that now. Awesome. Let's get that down as soon as we can here. So it seems like the majority of the spawns that we're getting seem to come from like right over there. Uh, all of those bears, cougars, all that seem to come from like that area over there and then over into our base. So I'm going to put the creature to turn actually on the other side of this river to try and get a little bit more of this area over here blocked by it. I'm just going to stick it right here for now. Let's get it wired up. Alright, we got a Jaguar right here, right next to our power. Let's get him taken care of. A little rabbit. Alright. And we have our creature turret up and running. Hopefully that's the last creature that we get spawning right next to our shoreline. Alright, uh, but if we take a look at the map here, you can see the area of effect is actually very large for this thing. Uh, putting it on the other side of the lake, we still have our entire island encompassed by it, a good chunk of the shore on the other side, and then our power island as well. 
So hopefully having this huge chunk inside of our creature deterrent, we're going to be getting much fewer spawns of jaguars and bears. Uh, but we have that up and running. We have a jaguar right here, disproving what I'm saying immediately. Um, but I think the creature deterrent doesn't 100% prevent animal spawns. It just significantly decreases the chance. Um, so hopefully our lives will be a lot easier with this thing up now. But yeah, so taking a look at our power network, we can see that the powered creature deterrent is a constant 1500 power. I'm going to set this as a priority. Um, so we're going to have that prioritized. So if we're ever running low on power, this will always be running um, no matter what. Alright, and now that we have some more uh, titanium on our hands, I'm also going to go ahead and craft up the Miasmic Pickaxe. So hopefully for future runs, uh, getting all that oxide and sulfur and silica, we'll be able to use this thing and get a lot of noxious crust, which we can then uh, craft up into more oxide, sulfur, whatever it is that we mine. Alright, and now the other thing I definitely want to get to work on is expanding our base a little bit more. We are going to be getting some new benches pretty soon in here, so I definitely want to push this wall back, and with that taken care of, we'll have a nice 5x5 five five floor. Um, that will be pretty much as much space as you need just for a workshop. Uh, we can always make it much larger later on in the future, but let's go ahead and push that wall back and get ourselves a 5x5. Five five. Man, things are already so much more peaceful out here. We'd usually be seeing some jaguar or something roaming around on the opposite bank, but we are just in absolute tranquility right next to our beautiful waterfall. I'm loving that powered creature deterrent. All right, just like that, we have our little expansion taken care of. Let's do a little bit of reorganizing in here. Um, the ceiling is a little janky, as you can see. Um, so, I mean, eventually we're definitely going to want to upgrade into concrete. For right now, I'm just sort of getting the floor plan down. We're going to get all of this um, space kind of sorted out, figure out what we can do. And I'll see you guys as soon as I've finished reorganizing things in the place. All right, and as I'm sort of reorganizing everything, I realized that we still have all of these talent points that we've just been sitting on for the longest time. So let's go ahead uh, take a breather and look at what we can do in terms of getting our character stronger. Alright, so the first thing I want to grab here is Food Pyramid, which will give us one extra slot in our stomach for another buff. And in order to reach maximum level, I think what I'm going to get is Vegetarian. Um, there are some really good foods in this game that are only fruits, vegetables, um, including the Fruit Muffin. So the Fruit Muffin will be 15% more powerful for us once we get that. So I'm going to grab Vegetarian. Um, there are some other good vegetable-only dishes as well, but I think that's the best one. Um, and that will give us 15% more on vegetable dishes. And then let's just grab Food Pyramid. Awesome, and that gave us an achievement for reaching the final stage in a talent tree. Alright, and this one... Um, might be a little controversial, some people might get a little upset, say it's a waste, but um, I'm going to be crafting a concrete building here pretty soon. We're going to want to get this whole thing upgraded into concrete, so I'm just going to put two points into discount concrete. That'll make our concrete buildings 25% cheaper. We're going to want a ton of concrete building pieces, and you know, we have 30 respect points. After I finish crafting absolutely everything I want out of concrete, maybe I'll respect these two points. But for now, I'm just going to grab that. That's going to be a nice uh, sort of bonus as we start to upgrade into concrete buildings. And for this playthrough, I definitely feel like I'm going to be focusing on firearms for the main part. Um, I think primarily on the shotgun. So I think it's finally time we start putting some points into our offense here. Um, and you guys know me, I love my movement speed. I'm going to first work towards getting 10% movement speed with a firearm equipped. So we'll put our first points into these two. Um, and that's it for our main talent tree here. And then for our solo points, um, you know, we are playing on hard mode here. I definitely would like to avoid dying if at all possible. So I'm going to grab the second point in Healthy Maverick here. 
we're gonna have 100 extra HP because of this. And then I think I wanna put two points into um, the gun skill perks as well. So let's grab the first one of those. And then with our expanded base here, we have a lot more space to work with. I think it's finally time to start thinking about getting ourselves a proper kitchen set up as well. So I'm gonna grab the kitchen blueprints here. Let's get the marble kitchen bench, uh, the electric stove, of course, and then the deep freeze. Um, maybe we'll consider getting a refrigerator as well, but I think the main one that you really want uh, is the deep freeze. If you have the um, talent here in survival, um, fresh is best, you can pretty much have infinite storage on any crops that you grow because they'll just permanently remain um, healthy until you harvest them. So you just wait to harvest them until you want to cook with them. You never really have to worry about your crops spoiling as long as you have them out there in your crop plots. So I think uh, the main thing that we want is the deep freeze so we can put our cooked foods into the deep freeze um, and make sure that those stay healthy and do not spoil. So I also went ahead and grabbed the salting station here in tier 2. Uh, it's something that I never grabbed, but it's 100% something that you want um, as soon as you start cooking really good foods like the fruit muffin. Those things spoil extremely quickly, so everything that you can do to make them last a little bit longer is going to be helpful. So let's get that salting station. And we also have the beehive unlocked. I still haven't crafted one of these. Uh, but let's, I think, maybe expand our way outwards. We have a lot of honeycomb that we're working with, a lot of bees in our inventory, so I think let's also get a beehive set up. That will make, I believe if you place this next to your crops, it actually gives them a bonus um, in terms of how fast they grow, maybe. So I wanna get one of these crafted up as well, and I think I'm gonna research the small expansion um, and just leave it at the small expansion for now. All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome back. I did quite a bit of changes to the base here. As you can see, the facade is a little bit different. Uh, let me get a better view from over here. So as you can see, we ended up doing a sort of double ramp on both sides, but just on this side of the house. So we can get our solar panels all the way up on the very top of the base, make sure we get the sun as early as we possibly can there. Um, and overall, you know, it's a little bit of an asymmetrical design from the outside. I think it looks kind of cool, kind of interesting. Uh, but let's go ahead on the inside and I'll show you how I reorganized everything. So as you can see, just a ton more floor space out here. We can start lining up some new benches kind of in the middle of the floor here as well. Uh, but everything is just nice and out of the way. I have my sort of survival needs in this corner. We have the oxidizer, the water purifier, um, all of our sort of power benches and everything out off to the side. We have our cement mixer, masonry table right here. So it didn't change a whole lot uh, as far as layout goes, but we do have this sort of interesting looking ceiling now. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking the very open floor plan now. We have a lot more space to just move around freely. This uh, organic residue cleanser is just such a chunky beast. Like It has this massive water tank in the back, so it's really kind of hard to line up anywhere nicely. Um, so I just kind of settled to put it in the corner for now. Uh, but yeah, that's how the base is looking. Um, and I think, now that I'm looking at it, you know, this raggedy old cooking station we need to upgrade. So I think it's about time we get a real kitchen down. We're gonna go ahead and make a kitchen bench and that electric stove. So let's take a look at what we need for those. Um, the electric stove is gonna take some more composites, a few electronics, um, but all of this we should have uh, ready to go here. So I think, let's see how many composites we have. We have 40 composites, so we're definitely, oh, 49 composites. So we're good on the composites. Um, let's go ahead and get all the ingredients together for this electric stove, and then the marble kitchen bench is also a couple composites. Uh, oh, a hundred stone. I definitely think we don't have that. Oh, we do. We barely have enough stone. Yeah, we, we spent most of our stockpiled stone creating all these new uh, building pieces to get the new sort of expanded base up. Uh, but I'm gonna actually go out, just grab a little bit more stone. Um, as soon as we're done crafting here. But for now, I think we're good. Um, to get these things crafted up. So let me just gather up all the ingredients and I'll be back with you guys in just a second. 
All right, we have everything that we need. Let's go ahead and get these two things crafting up. So marble kitchen bench and electric stove. Oh, we're missing something. Oh, we're missing composites. We need two more composites. Electric stove. And there we go. We have our basic kitchen ready to go here. So I'm going to get this ugly old cooking station out of here and get our new kitchen benches up. Amazing. So we have our marble kitchen bench, our electric stove. Let's get these things wired up. Um, so I'll also show you when I'm doing the wiring, um, now that I have a lot more floor space, what I can just do is break one of the floors here, go under, and get all the wiring hooked up this way. So um, as you can see, this is my wiring setup. It's pretty clean compared to what it was before. So we're going to drag our water pipe just a little bit more, uh, if I can, a little bit more in this direction. We're kind of clipping into the roof <laughs> above us. Okay, water pipe there. So we'll get that in the kitchen bench, and then one more connection out into that. Very nice, nothing clipping through the floor. And then let's grab our electricity here too. So we'll grab that into our electric stove. There we go, all hooked up. And when you're all done, just pull out the floor and you're done. So we are going to have to craft the walls all around the bottom half of it, so you know you, you won't see this web of uh, pipes and wires all around here. We're going to build some walls pretty much all the way across on the outside to make everything nice and clean, but I think that's a project for once we've upgraded into concrete. Um, oh, we have a bear. So our powered creature deterrent did not prevent that bear from spawning, unfortunately. Uh, let's go take care of him. Oh. Looks like he's wandering away. I think he's going to be fine. Let's just get back to focusing on the base here. So, with our new electric stove, we have a world of recipes open to us now. Um, the ones that I was talking about that I'm just constantly uh, harping on are this savory roll here. So, you want to look for these foods that give 1200 second buffs. Um, they, I think, are usually the best ones. So this one gives you 225 health, 75 maximum stamina, food consumption down, stamina regen, health regen, and experience. So that is a massive thing. Uh, the fruit muffin gives you 225 stamina and then 35% experience gain. So that's going to be super helpful for trying to level up. Uh, we don't really have all the ingredients required for these quite yet, but we can get them pretty easily from the orbital exchange. Um, so those are the two that I really like. Um, this vegetable roll is also really nice. Um, and because we took that perk that gives us 15% better uh, fruit and vegetable foods, both this vegetable roll and this fruit muffin will have 15% better stats. So, um, you know, instead of 150 maximum stamina, it will be, what, 17% uh, more? on top of our uh, maximum health, so 17 more maximum health on top of that because of that little boost. Um, I think I did my math right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these are these are really awesome foods. Um, I'm super glad that we got this down. The other thing, um, now that we have this uh, electric stove, that it didn't actually used to be too uh, powerful. Uh, gorse tea, cocoa, all of these things were one-time use. Uh, but with the new water update, the new water purifier update, you actually consume these slowly over time the same way you consume your water bottle. So these uh, hot drinks are actually extremely good now. Um, you know, you can have a pretty much a permanent, uh, you know, plus 25% health regen, plus 10%, uh, 10 Celsius to temperature, water consumption down from gorse tea, uh, food consumption down on cocoa. Um, and then max stamina and stamina regen on coffee, which I think is one of the better ones. So you can stick a thermos with coffee in your water slot, and you'll kind of permanently have even more stamina regen than you would have otherwise. So that's another reason why I really wanted to get this down, so we can look into getting ourselves some coffee and some hot drinks too. So let's take a look at the orbital exchange now that we have that kitchen bench down. Um, we can start thinking about maybe getting ourselves um, some of those seeds that are only available from the orbital exchange. So, 
Uh, one of them is strawberries, and the other is avocados. So as you can see, it costs 50 to research and then 20 to craft. You pretty much only need to craft it one time because you get seeds when you harvest. Uh, but that's going to be 140 ren for those two. And with that in mind, I think with our fancy new orbital uh, contact device here, maybe we try out one of these simple quests. So it's only going to be 30 ren, but it's going to be a good chunk of experience too. So I think maybe we give this one a try. Um, I'm pretty familiar with how this one goes. If it's out in the Arctic biome, it might be a little bit difficult, but let's just see what it looks like. Okay, so it is out in the Arctic biome. That's a little unfortunate. Uh, but in reverse, actually, now that I think about it, you know, there aren't any trees, there aren't really anything um, that can sort of hide the bodies. So it should be pretty easy to spot them and get out there and grab those... Uh, grab those beacons as quickly as we can. So I don't think I'm going to take my MOA for this. I think I'm just going to hoof it over there. Uh, but let's take care of this quest real quick. Start getting ourselves some money. Um, get Make sure we get our healing items in our bar because they're going to be bears. Uh, we have 27 shots on our shotgun as well. So this should be a lot easier than it was the first time we did it. Uh, we also have 66 arrows, so let's get over there. And once you're pretty geared up in Icarus, you can really start doing the missions with a lot more ease than you otherwise would have. Um, so that's really kind of my goal is I want to get composite and obsidian armor. You know, get our titanium tools, um, get ourselves you know a good stockpile of good ammunition for this shotgun. Maybe we'll also build the hunting rifle. Uh, but once we're really sort of geared up, uh, I think that's going to be the time that we really start looking into completing those uh, operations. We're approaching the mission zone here. We're going to be there in just a couple seconds, and hopefully it should be pretty easy to spot the bodies on the ground while we're out here um, in the Arctic biome. Hopefully they didn't spawn on top of that rock. Um, but let's see what we're working with here. We're entering the mission zone now, so uh, let's see if it's hard or easy. Okay, so I already spotted the first body, and this is already much easier than uh, it was in the other version. I see another body right over there. Um, yeah, I'm, I have a feeling this isn't going to be too bad as long as we can avoid getting totally destroyed by these polar bears. Oh, see, these are polar bear cubs. Yeah, so that was a polar bear cub. This isn't even nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Um, so we should be able to take these guys out. Oop. I say that as I get nailed. Yeah, we can one-shot them if we get a good headshot. Um, so that's two. I see the third one over there. We got all these polar bears cubs coming on in. ran out of ammo there. That wasn't as clean as it could have been. Um, but I think that's most of the creatures. You know, I'm kind of surprised it's just the cubs instead of the full-on polar bears. That would have made this mission a much, much more difficult task. Um, oh, this says five. I remember it being four, but I guess it's five. Uh, but with all that taken care of, you know, let's... Uh, Rather gather some of these arctic pelts. These are our first arctic pelts of the map as well. So I'm going to go ahead and gather all of this up. Uh, and once we've done that, let's keep searching. Alright. Um, so this is the one that we grab. Yes, okay. So there's another one over here by the drop pod. Let's grab this one. Okay, there's three. Now we need to find two more. Hearing something over here. Oh, there he is. Okay, so we just need one more. I think they updated this mission because 
If I listen closely, I can hear like a beeping sound. I don't know if that was there last time I did this mission. Um, I thought I already grabbed this guy. I guess not. Okay. Well, there's all five. Uh, cool. Alright, that was it. That was very quick and easy. Let's get these in here. Awesome. We also got a good amount of experience from killing all of those polar bears. So we're already getting our on our way to level 41 here. There's our reward. Go ahead and grab this. What do we have here? Um, so those storage chests, absolutely useless. <laughs> Dried saltwater fish, really don't want that. Um, man, these rewards kind of stink. I guess, uh, I guess we take the fire extinguisher. Maybe that will come in handy. We have a stone base, so it's not super necessary. Um, I mean, if I deconstructed these, I think that's just normal wood, or maybe that's refined wood. This might be a refined wood. That, that's kind of nice. I, I think we're just going to take the fire extinguisher because we don't have one. Um, let's grab that. That was a little bit of a letdown as far as the reward goes. But look at that experience. That was quite a bit. 15,000. Very cool. So with that, um, I think... I don't know if there's a way to see how much Ren you have in your inventory. I don't think so. Um, I think we had 30-something Ren, so that'll put us at 60. So we still don't have quite enough to craft one of those seeds yet, but that was a nice little mission. Alright, and we made it back. It is currently storming. Let's stash up all the stuff that we found. And, man, I love how spacious this base is now. This is great. Uh, let's go ahead and stash up everything we found. We did get a ton of meat from that. We, <laughs> we're we really stocked on animal fat. I don't think we need to craft any more of that. I'm just going to stick it in here. Maybe just let it rot for now. Um, but, yeah, we have these arctic pelts. I think these are primarily used for rugs. So I'm just going to stash them in here for now. And the other thing that I wanted to get going was these beehives. So let's go ahead and take out some of that honeycomb and look at what we need to get one of those going. Okay, so we're going to need 30 refined wood. I think we have that. Yeah, we have a ton of refined wood. So let's go ahead and craft up one of these things. Um, we can actually craft up two of them. Uh, I'm not sure if we need to. Yeah, we don't have the copper nails. Let's just make one for now, and then we will also get that expansion. And let's get this small beehive expansion up. Awesome. All right, and now we are ready to start uh, making some honey. So I'm going to stick this down right next to all of our crops here. So I'm just going to stick this down right next to all of our crops here. I do think that it gives us um, a buff in terms of growth speed. So we're going to grab some of these worker bees. Uh, let's just grab four of them for now. Stick them in there as well. And then put our expansion on. Okay, awesome. And so this gives us a better energy transmutation resource cost. So uh, the fuel is consumed 10% more slowly, I guess. And then it also has six more inventory slots. Um, so these bees are going to last us for two hours of in-game time, and we get one honeycomb per minute. Uh, so that's going to be 120 honeycomb from that stack of bees. I don't want to use all of our worker bees because there is another expansion, um, the breeding center, which costs a ton of platinum that we don't have. <laughs> uh, we're going to need to get some of that. The, bee, the breeding center allows a queen bee to produce more worker bees. So, uh, yeah, we're going to want that. We can use these three queen bees to make more worker bees. So I guess it's fine to spend all of our worker bees. Um, but as far as the queen bees go, you don't want to waste those, I feel like, um, in the upper slot. Yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Let's go ahead and take a quick, quick nap here. And in the morning... I think the final task for today's episode is let's try and get ourselves an electric drill up and running. We have so much power in surplus with those two solar panels. So let's get ourselves our very first electric drill. Good morning, everybody. It is another fantastic day here on Prometheus. So for our electric drill, we're going to need eight titanium ingots, eight carbon fiber, 
and then some electronics, aluminum, and screws. I think we should have enough carbon fiber remaining, or maybe not. Okay, yes we do, we have 12 remaining, so let's get all of that together. All right, and here we go, our very first electric deep mining drill of the hard mode playthrough. That feels so good. So with this thing crafted up, I think what my plan is going to be is we're going to place the electric deep mining drill on the copper node, sort of right over by our geyser over here, and then move this biofuel back over to our titanium because I feel like we're constantly running low on titanium. We're also going to replace all the cans on our biofuel drills. And I think with this electric drill running on copper, um, I might regret this down the line, but I think we're going to be good to move our copper drill over to a platinum node. Um, just so we can have a good grip of platinum. We don't need a, a massive amount of platinum in the long run, but you know, looking at some of the things that we want to craft, it's going to take some, some platinum as like a one-time cost. So I think we get a biofuel drill on a platinum node. Uh, we did find a platinum node uh, in the first sort of venture out into the Arctic biome. So I know there's a platinum vein at the bottom of E4. I have that in my notepad here. So we're going to move the biofuel drill to that platinum, get our electric drill up and running, and we are going to be looking good here. Alright, so we have arrived at our biofuel copper drill here. Let's grab all of this up, we're going to need it. And then pick this thing up. We're going to be moving this. I actually decided that I am going to do um, our gold drill. I'm going to move the gold drill onto our platinum, but for now, let's get this copper going. So we have our electric tool, thankfully I didn't forget that. Uh, now, I have to drag the wire all the way back to where we have our water borer. It's not going to be too far of a uh, walk here. Fortunately, we have some power already out here. Alright, there we go. Let's just double check. We have everything hooked up. Electric deep mine drill is running, 2000 power. That is awesome. So we are going to be getting tons and tons of copper out of this thing. It's still 1.5 per minute. The same exact speed, but uh, it has a massive inventory and it will never stop running as long as we have electricity going. So, you know, right now at nighttime, I don't think it will be running uh, unless we have enough surplus power from the two water wheels. Um, but that thing is just going to be running 24-7 for us. That's going to be huge. Uh, I don't know why we're getting so many creature spawns, despite having our creature turret literally right next to them. They're just staring at this creature deterrent, mocking it. Alright, well, at least we hit level 41 from that. Very cool. Alright, we have all of that deposited. Let's go ahead and take care of our biofield drills in the Arctic Zone. Alright, here we are. We have a wolf, of course, coming in here. Um, so we're going to take all this gold, and as I said, I think we're going to take this off of the gold and put this one on the platinum for now, or on the platinum, yeah, and then uh, our second one on the titanium. So we have so much surplus gold right now. Um, yeah, we are going to want more gold eventually, but I think it's fine to just take a break from mining gold for a little bit. We have so much in surplus that yeah, I think this will be fine. All right, so here is that platinum node. Now, we we're not going to need a ton of platinum in the long run. Oh, that wolf followed me all the way over here. And he's damaging my MOA, okay. Uh, anyways, so in the long run, you know, platinum is pretty much used to just craft some things. Um, I do think the obsidian armor takes platinum weave, so we are going to need more platinum for that. Um, so yeah, I think it's a good idea just to get some more platinum running. We'll get that taken care of. But leave our electric drill on the copper, leave this biofuel on the copper, and then we'll also get another biofuel on, on uh, titanium. Alright, so here is that good old titanium node that we found. Let's get our biofuel drill on this. Alright, and just like that, we are stocked up on some gold, copper, 
We got titanium and platinum mining. I'm feeling very good. All right, and I think that is going to wrap it up for today's episode. You know, again, we've made some huge progress today. We got our two solar panels up. We have our very first electric deep vein mining going. I'm feeling really good about the progress. I feel like we're just sort of right on the cusp of being truly geared. Um, you know, I think next priorities are, you know, let's work on trying to get ourselves some composite armor. Um, maybe trying to get ourselves the obsidian armor as well. Uh, I think it might be worth trying to find a deep vein for obsidian specifically so we can get that armor up and running. Um, but yeah, we got some big goals in mind. And once we've kind of fully geared this character up, gotten our armor, gotten our attachments all set up, I think that's when we're going to start diving into those missions. And my goal eventually is to complete every single mission here on Prometheus all the way up to Fracture Manhunt. It's going to be a big challenge, but it's going to be a lot of fun playing those missions again, but uh, for the first time on hard mode. So that's definitely something to look forward to. Thank you everybody for all of the support you've been showing. The channel is at 600 subscribers now, which is just, again, every time I say this, every time I have a subscriber number update, it's just blowing my mind. I never thought that so many people would be interested in watching the series, but you know, thank you so much for the support. It's been a lot of fun playing the game again and reading your comments, so... Thanks for the support, and I hope you all continue to stick with me here. So until next time, goodbye.